Hi there, Alakar Jay here, and this is a standalone video for anyone that's still having problems with collecting papers. So, the scripts for the Slender Guide are for all of the Slender Guide. Um, the scripts you find are at the end when all the videos have been completed. So people may want to just collect papers on their own without the rest of the functionality. So we're going to build a scene from scratch and collect the papers in that scene. First of all, we'll just bring in some assets to work with, build our scene. We need the character controller. We only need the first person character controller. I'm just going to remove anything related to the third. It's obvious. Okay, we have our first person character controller preferred. I'm going to create a couple of materials. Floor and the material for the paper. Okay. So we'll start building our scene. Create the floor. It's going to be quite big because it's our floor with the material. Okay. We'll add a directional light to light our scene. Raise that up out of the way. Bring in our first first controller. Let's name is player. And we'll save the scene. So we'll just build our scene. Let's just check everything's working as it should. Of course, no. The player comes with its main camera. We don't use the Unity default scene one. Save that out. So, everything's working as it should be so far. Alright. Now to work on collecting papers. First, we'll create the game objects that will represent our papers. Create a cube. Scale it to the size of your paper. And we're going to apply our material. Our paper, of course, rename it paper. But just to recap, our paper object is a cube that has been positioned and scaled. It has been renamed paper, given a material. Duplicate our paper. and create the papers that we wish to have in our scene. In this case, the most common case is eight papers. So we have created eight papers, all of the same object. It's a cube that has been scaled. That's it. So our scene has been built. It's time to create some functionality to pick these up. JavaScript. Then need some variables. So variable papers subtype int equals zero. What this is is our counter. Now any papers collected. We have a second variable which is the maximum amount of papers on the scene. Variable papers to int. 
that's also a count for five pimps, equals eight in our scene. And when we were picking up papers with the ray cast, we're assigning a distance, a maximum distance of which we can't pick up papers after that to keep it realistic. So, bar distance to paper. This is a float, this is a distance, and we're going to give it 5.5 just to start. So, we want to start collecting papers. That's usually done with an input, so we'll start there. If, set up my brackets, as always, if we're looking for an input, and the first input we're going to be using is the get mouse button down. And we're going to be getting the left mouse button. Okay, but in the editor for testing, we found using E key is sometimes handy. So, let's in input get key down. And that's the enum key code. Okay, so we're checking for an input, we're checking for the left mouse button, or we're checking for the E being pressed. Okay, after that, we want to cast array. So, sign a variable for the information in the array to hit the array cast hit. Okay, and we're going to assign a screen position. From which to cast the ray from. Now, we want the ray to always be cast from the center of the vision of the player, which is the camera, so it's just the center of the camera, the center of the screen. So we'll build that out into a vector. Now we'll build that out into a ray for the ray cast function to use. So, Okay. And this is a type ray, and this is coming from the camera main screen point to ray. Now this takes a vector three. And we want to cast from the center of our screen. So our vector 3 on the X is going to be screen width times 1.5 divided by 2. Okay, so it's half the screen width. And then you go for Y, screen height, same thing, half of it times 1.5. And for the Z, we're just going to leave that at 0. See if that saves out because I've had no IntelliSense for all that. Okay, that saves out. No compilation there. I've just lost IntelliSense. So, checked for an input, and then we're starting to build the variables needed for our ray cast. So, let's cast a ray. If we cast a ray, physics ray cast. Okay. Ray cast is coming from the ray position which we calculated. Okay, that is giving us a position and a direction all in one. And then we are looking for the hit, and we are looking for it to hit within a distance of distance to paper. Okay, so if the physics ray cast from the center of the screen pointing straight towards the center of player's view. Hits anything at a distance to paper. Let's tell us what it is. All right, we can stop it right here. So we want to know the ray hit. So we've got the hit information. So we hit the collider of the hit and the game object. That belongs to that collider. 
and we want to get its name. So, just with this basic script, let's test it out. This is the essence of ray casting. If anything is failing for anyone with collecting papers, it is this. We have no compilation errors, so we've got the player. We want him to be collecting papers. Okay, so we'll just out of the script, we'll save the scene, we've made changes. We'll hit play and see what's happening. As I said, you can see the mouse is not locked, so it's all over the place. So in the editor, we're going to use E to pick up papers. So if I get about within 5.5, we're checking the console, look at the bottom right of the screen. I hit the E button, and I have a debug return. Let's pause that. The ray hit paper, okay? So if anybody's having problems collecting paper, this is it, okay? They're getting to this point now, and they're not getting a debug. Something's wrong in the scene, something is wrong in the setup. Apart from that, I cannot explain it. But the debug is telling the whole story. We're taking an input, from that input, we immediately cast a ray. And as soon as that ray hits something within this distance, it will tell us what it hit. We can test that on other things. We'll resume play. That was a paper. Okay, we'll try. I should put a debug if there's no ray hit. But anyway, there's another paper. There's another paper. Let's try the floor. Ray hit the floor. Okay, so out of the two objects in our scene with colliders, our ray cast is detecting them. Okay, for anyone that's not seeing things at this point, we can include a debug. I'm going to look this one up because I can't remember the time delay for it. So, debug, we want to draw a line for this particular one. Because we know where we're starting from, that's our camera position. We know where we're ending, that's where the hit point is, where the ray cast hits. Tell like this is what I was after the duration. Okay, so that's how we'll pull it together. So, let's just use that for a reference. Uh, you'll see why I need the delay in a moment. Draw line. Okay, so we're going camera main. Transform position. So that's where we're casting the ray from. Okay, haven't finished that, have I? We want it to end, and we want it to end at the hit point. Okay, this is the point that is returned by the ray cast hit. See, this ray cast hit has a lot of variables underneath it. That's why this is such a beautiful thing to learn. Okay, this is what I was looking at color. Um, color. Equals color Why not mark? Uh, let's go red. And I want the duration. And I should have just got a pop it straight away. So I'm just going to give it 0.5. So for half a second, you should see my debug line flash up. Okay, this is only going to happen if the ray hits an object. Let's just save it out and see if I haven't made any, I've made a lot of mistakes on the fly. So I've missed a bracket. If I draw a line, where's the start and end of that? Draw a line. Ah, look. I guess I'm trying to copy the thing. Alright, let's try that. There you go. Alright, so let's watch in this window here. The player. Let's see if I can get a deeper line. Okay, see that red line there? Okay. Paper's not being destroyed. See that red line? It's saying, yep, that's showing us that ray. And that point. See so if we can pull back. He's at 5.5 meters. Oh, it's still there. It's still there. There we go. We just walked past 5.5 meters. There's no line. Okay. So, if you're not at this stage, stop and start the video again. Create four cubes. Do not even scale them or anything. Just put four cubes out there in the whole world. Stop and pause the script, the video, beg your pardon, right here, and have a good look at the script. Okay. Maximum distance that the 
I cast will detect. Okay. Okay, so everyone else that's getting that debug and that line just as you're seeing exactly right here, right now, we can continue. Maybe I'm going to bring that duration up for a little bit, so let me test it one more time. Okay, same script. Let's zoom in on the paper a little bit closer. So we're going to go to that second one. Give me that angle. Watch everything happen. Okay, we're checking the player. Come up to the second paper. I'll press the E. There we go. That's saying, yep, yeah, I'm looking right there. See where the last one is staying, because I put that delay right up. But all this time, each time, I'm getting a debug, and I'm getting a line. Alright? So, if this part is working, then every part should just fall into place. Because that is it. It is a raycast on a collider. So, if we successfully Decided that we are hitting something. So we want to check what we are hitting. So if let me get my mouse, hit the collider of that hit, and of course the game object of that hit, and the name is equal to string paper. Okay? The name of the game object. There it is there. Paper, paper. If the hit collider game object name is paper, let's just copy this bit. Break it. Paper. Or sure. Let's check that out. Save it out. Oh, what is going on? I'll tell you, this is actually my third take. For sure. Let me go on. Okay, so I shouldn't check the floor, but the floor, and now I get no debug at all. The paper, break the paper for sure. Okay, well, are you sure about that? We'll check the floor. No, but, okay, that's, there we go. Break the paper for sure. I should have left the line in. Break the paper for sure. Just look at that. Okay, it's telling us that it wants to. Alright, so as you can see, once your raycast is working and detecting objects, and then you'll also filtering them out by a name stream, you can do anything you want with it. Because we've fallen into this part of the script. Saying yes we are here. We're only receiving this message if we hit with a paper. So if we hit a paper, we're going to increment our papers. Plus equals one. So papers, we add to papers one. Papers, whatever it is, plus one. Okay, you can even watch that in the inspector. Player, watch the papers. Two, three, you can see that count there. If I remove the debug, watch that variable, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you can see them come from behind, the one at the end. Okay, 8, 9, 20, here we go. So, there we go. Once we've determined that our raycast is hitting a certain object, we can do anything we want with it. We can increment a variable, and we can also destroy the hit collider this game object. Okay? Now, I'm getting the paper. We're falling into here and we saw that adding. Now, logic dictates we must be executing this line. So, we press play. We're watching the papers this time now. So, let's just look. We're not near it. i am turn around. There we go. Okay, same thing. Just going to spam the E. There we go. All right. Let's see if we can just do it without spamming it. One press. Come in from behind. At an angle, center of the screen, within 5.5, center of the screen, 5.5. 5. 
Okay. And then our paper's been destroyed. Okay, six, seven, and we look at our counter. There we have eight. So we have eight out of eight. So we'll just go to our win condition. Yes. Papers is equal to papers to win. Let us know that we've reached the limit. You have collected all papers. Fantastic. Let's check that out. As you can see, nothing changed apart from when I said stop and see if you see the debug. All we've done is, if we know this for sure, we just add a small stop, okay? But it should be there. If we were there, we should have it. So we'll save that out and see if we can collect all the papers, and it will let us know when we've collected all papers. So hit play. Walk within 5.5 meters of the paper. Look directly at it. Press the E. For test, press the left mouse button. Left mouse button, D. Left mouse button, see that's where it broke, D. <laughs> oh, left mouse button, D. As soon as. Okay, and we're looking at the console for the last paper. You have collected all papers. Fantastic. Well, it would be if people were picking up papers. So what I'm going to do is, you've seen the script get built right here. I'm not using anything in start. This script right here, I'm going to post in the comments. So people that are working off this video alone and they just want a standalone collect papers script, here it is. And I've left plenty of debugs in that you can test for yourself. Okay, I'm going to finish this off and upload it. See if this is helping people out. Good luck, and I'll see you on the next one.